Welcome. Today we're going to talk about tips and things to look for when you're dating to know that you can have a successful relationship. There are three components that you should definitely pay attention to as you start dating and already know before you go into the dating situation. It makes it more comfortable for you. It makes it easier to make a choice and it makes the date more fun. But first, let's run the show reel. <laughs> The biggest challenge I see when people start to date is they don't know themselves or exactly what they're looking for. So perhaps people are unhealed from a relationship or perhaps you're not really sure what you want in a partner, what that looks like, what that feels like. So step one is to make a list of the essentials. Now, some people do this really lovely. So imagine yourself now writing out basically the dream. This is like manifestation, right? Picture yourself happy, joyful with your ideal partner. What does that look like? What does that feel like? What traits are they bringing into the world or do they already carry in the world that they bring into the relationship? And I'm not just talking about, oh, they're trustworthy and they're honest and they're loyal, but how else are they in the world? Like, what do you really need? Do you need playfulness? Do you need steadfastness? Do you need financial stability? Do you need someone that loves children? Right, so what do you actually need in a relationship? And is this someone that actually already has those values and traits? Because people tend to try to change somebody. They find someone they think is perfect for them and then find a couple things they don't like and then try to shift them. And nobody wants to be changed. Do you want to be changed? Have you ever had someone try to change something that you're doing and found that it's annoying? So this is why it's so important to know ahead of time what you want and don't want in a relationship. So as you start dating, remember that everything is a test. So if you spill your water on the table during your first date, instead of being embarrassed, you get to go, okay, this is a test. How is that other person going to react? Are they going to be supportive, helpful, playful, or are they going to laugh at me? And that helps you determine the red flag so you can make an easier choice about who you're gonna date in relationships. So when you know yourself, you know what the essentials are that you want in your partner, you can make better choices. But the next challenge that I see is that people don't know what their deal breakers are. When we're really looking to create a relationship, we want to understand what it also is that we don't want. Now, when you make your list of likes and dislikes in a relationship, it is important to focus on what you do want. So if you, instead of saying, well, I don't want someone who is a jerk, then what do you want? Instead of saying, I don't want a liar, saying, I want someone who's trustworthy or honorable or chivalrous, right? Know what those words are and what they mean to you, but also know your deal breakers. So deal breakers are big things that people have as traits or as values or as patterns in their life that don't suit you. So perhaps a deal breaker for you is someone that watches television all the time, or perhaps a deal breaker for you is someone who's always um, criticizing you. Perhaps the deal breaker for you is someone who drinks or who smokes or who has an addiction. Perhaps the deal breaker for you is someone that shuts down during communication instead of being open and honest. So know what are your deal breakers. And that way, when you start dating, if that person possesses that as a prime trait of themselves, you can say, thank you for the dates. I appreciate you as a person. This isn't gonna work for me, right? And you're letting them go to somebody that is more suited for them. So it's not rejection. What it is, is it's a graciousness of knowing there's someone better out there for me and there's someone better out there for that person as well. And now we're equally letting go. When you decide to choose that a date not working out or a person not being your perfect partner is actually about releasing them to someone better, and same thing, if someone says, you know, I don't think this is gonna work for me, being actually grateful that they didn't waste your time, your money, and your energy, instead of viewing it as rejection, start viewing it as a compliment and respect of how that other person or how you are releasing each other into the world to find their ideal partner. So knowing what it is that you need, knowing the essentials of what you need in a relationship, and also knowing the deal breakers actually makes that process so much easier for everyone involved. 
And number three, communicate and be honest. And I know everyone talks about this, but this also goes to making your first impression. So of course you wanna make a good first impression and make sure that your first impression also isn't disingenuous. In other words, if you don't normally dress up in high heels and a bunch of makeup, or if you don't normally wear a suit and tie, unless you're going somewhere that demands that, don't wear that to your first date. I remember once I went on a date with a guy, we went to a movie theater and he wore a suit and tie. But the first time I met him, when I ran into him out in public, he was wearing like a scrubby shirt and pants. And that's fine, but it was a very interesting to me. It made me not trust because I was like, why was he wearing this in public, running around being casual, being himself perhaps. And then when he comes to pick me up for a date, wears a suit and tie to a movie theater. So it didn't mesh. It didn't make sense and it broke my sense of trust. And so when you communicate, come forward with all that you are. At a first date, it makes things easier. So when you're honest about who you are and what you're bringing in a series of dates or as you get to know somebody well, it's actually part of the relationship trust building process. So being a little bit vulnerable, sharing what you are, what you want, is this a hookup? Is this a situation where it's going to be a relationship? What do you want? What do they want? What are the goals around this? And really coming forward with that deep level of, I'm not going to tell you my whole life story on day one or day two or day three, but giving a little bit of information and vulnerability and opening up and allowing that other person to open up too without dumping all the trauma, all the grief, all of everything else on that other person, right? So communication is about building trust, making sure that you're compatible in your communication styles, learning about how to speak with each other honestly and openly, but also about learning if you're a good fit at that deep level. Do you each match the essential things that the other person needs or are there any red flags or deal breakers? And as a little aside, and this is for everybody as well, watch out for those red flags or those little niggles that are like, I'm a little nervous about that. Because that is very important, especially when you're first dating. You don't want to waste a bunch of time with somebody that's going to turn out to be narcissistic, someone that's stonewalls, someone that's controlling, someone that's demanding of your time and energy or that walls you off from who you are or expects you to be somebody that you're not. Someone that, that's criticizing or contemptuous towards you. So I hope you find this helpful and good luck in the dating world. Remember to stay safe and that you are loved, you are loving, and you are lovable, and you deserve everything that you want in your relationship. Namaste.